Okay, so I'm going to buy Page Industries. Uh, this is the first installment that I am putting in. So I'll buy 10 stocks for now. And subsequently, I'm going to buy more. So the buying is complete. And my first installment has been done. If it were that simple that, hey, just look at ROC, just look at PE ratio, combine both the things and you get the share price. Everyone would be making insane amount of money in the stock market. People will sell everything, put all their money on Page Industry stock and you're done, right? But it is not that simple. You're trying to build a forecast. So you must have a basic sense of something called as MOAT, M-O-A-T. Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So which is this 32,000 rupee stock I'm talking about? So the answer is Page Industries, Page, P-A-G-E, Industries. Now you might say, I don't know what this Page Industries is and honestly, I don't care. I'm never going to invest in this. Do listen to this entire video very, very carefully because there are very important lessons, especially about a concept called as MOAT, M-O-A-T. This is a concept that even MBA students from good colleges get confused about. Hear about this core concept that I will teach by using the example of Page Industries that how it has built a winning moat. This is the same concept that you can apply to any stock that you are looking to buy. Very important video, watch till the very end, otherwise things do not become clear. You will just understand half the information, move on. Also, just a very quick request, please press the like button, do it now. It allows me to understand that you are liking this type of content. So it acts as an indicator to me to keep on making these type of videos. Alright, so with that said, let's get the video started. And there are four things that I am going to talk about. One, I am going to discuss a little bit. Should you buy such expensive shares, right? Expensive in absolute terms, 32,000, 80,000 MRF, right? Should you buy these kind of stocks? Second point, I am going to discuss the obvious stuff, right? Which every YouTuber does that, hey, oh, here is the financials, this, that. I am going to help you understand also. Third, I am going to discuss points that no YouTuber is talking about regarding stock analysis. So that is three. Fourth and finally, what am I going to do on this stock, right? These are four topics. Let's get the video started. I'll make it sharp to the point, make notes and do comment in the comment box with whatever questions I'm answering. If you have still not pressed the like button, do it. It will make me super happy. All right. So first things first, should you buy expensive stocks? For example, we have stocks like MRF. It is trading around 80, 85,000 rupee stock. Now this is the portfolio size of a lot of retail investors. So if you are trying to buy MRF, you literally have to make it 100% of your portfolio, right? So of course, in such scenario, if your portfolio size is very small, it doesn't make any sense to buy like these kind of very super expensive type of stock because you just can't. But assuming that, hey, you know what, you have like a decent portfolio size, then should you consider buying these type of stocks, these expensive type of stocks like Page Industries or MRF? The short answer is that it does not matter. The absolute quantum of the price does not matter because it's like saying this. For example, if you have a 2000 rupee note, right? You go to an expensive restaurant, you eat your food, right? You eat your food with your friends and your wife. Then the waiter comes, they give you a bill of 2000. Now you have that 2000 rupee note, you can give it to the waiter and you're done. And if you have four 500 rupee notes, again, you can give those 500 rupee note to the waiter and you're done. So honestly, whether you have four 500 rupee notes or one big 2000 rupee note, it's one and the same thing. So if you're buying one stock of Page Industries, which is currently trading at 32,590, if you buy one stock or if you buy two stocks at approximately 16,000 rupee each, it's one and the same thing. There is no difference. Just because JP Power is trading at three and a half, four rupees, vis a vis MRF is trading at 85,000 rupees, it doesn't matter. From that angle, look at the total investment that you're making in a stock rather than the specific quantum of the price that you're looking at. I'm not talking about the buying price. I'm talking about the quantum of the price. For example, JP Power looks like a very inexpensive stock because it is trading at three, four, five rupees, right? So, okay, let's buy one stock. But are you just going to invest like three rupees in a stock? No, right? So, essentially look at the total amount that you're investing. Are you okay making these type of investments or not, right? Now, of course, if you say that, hey, Akshat, you know what? I don't have like enough money to buy like 85,000 worth of stock for MRF, right? And I can't buy like page industry which is like 32,000 right what should I do should I not invest in this you have another option right you can go via the mutual fund mutual fund route right so a lot of mutual funds might have exposure to page industries right page industries or they might have exposure to MRF so they would have some exposure to page industries or MRF you can buy these mutual funds and indirectly you will own the shares of MRF or fractional shares of MRF or page industries so I hope this discussion is okay that do not just assume that a stock is good or bad just because 
it looks expensive or because it looks inexpensive it has got nothing to do with it look at the total amount that you are investing in a stock that is more now if you are convinced that okay you know what page industries let's do the analysis then i'll make a call whether to invest 32000 in this stock directly or not so let me speak about some obvious things about the page industry just to set out the context now this is the website of page industries right so what does it do it's a value chain fully integrated manufacturing marketing distribution retail it does everything right and it has major brands like jockey right which is an innerwear brand and it has a brand called as speedo which is a swimwear brand right these are two major brands that jockey owns in india right now this is a franchisee business so to say that jockey is actually a us based brand and they have given the license a long term license to page industries manufacture distribute and retail these products across stores in india right so i hope this helps you understand that what type of products page industries is trying to sell now let's move on to the specifics right let us look at some of the financials right for example let us look at the yearly financials looks fine that you know what uh, revenues are going up 2500 back in 2018 now it's 2800 uh, earning per share is fine right if we take a look at like net income okay fine almost consistent probably because of covid this is the type of commentary that you will get right now you will probably look at like peers right and then you will start fretting that hey page industry pe ratio is 105 okay 105 this is like madness because if i take a look at lux it has a pe ratio of 45.72 so pe ratio is very high and probably it's like an overpriced stock okay now this is where you need to do and understand the nuances of buying a stock so let us look at the quarterly results first let me just very quickly take you through financials the sales have generally been increasing up until march of 2021 then of course lockdown happened people were not going out that much so of course that speedo brand would have entirely collapsed no one is swimming right due to corona virus so of course like you know the sales came down it looks reasonable right now net profit it is still a profitable company despite like so much headache going on due to corona virus and this is the type of a company that will directly take hit due to corona virus this is another key basic point that you will anyways note down now this is where the magic happens that people miss numbers like roc right roc is in simple terms means return on capital employed it simply means that if i give page industries 100 rupees what type of return it can give me on year on year basis so page industries can give me 48.2% return right now there was a major investor i will not tell his name his book is there on my shelf so i will ask you to guess the name of that investor in a simple terms he gave an excellent concept and the concept was that hey let's imagine that there is a firm that is giving an roc of 10% now the stock price in the long term will not grow or should not grow more than 10% why because this is the rate at which they are able to grow the capital so the rate at which they are growing the capital it's the same rate or approximately the same rate at which the entire company should grow guess the name of the investor i have simplified this concept for you but his book is kept on my shelf and i will post my answer after 2 hours of releasing this video the roc return on capital employed is 48.2% now if the roc is that massive the pe ratio will be massive because both these ratios are growth ratios you should in fact worry if the company has very low roc and the pe ratio is very high okay i hope this point is clear now you would say that okay can you prove that theory by showing me that lux thing that you were talking about about lux industries what is their their roc so their roc is 36.4 it is high but it is definitely not as high as page industries now there is one key point that no finance channel will tell you and it is so obvious that you know when i say it you will understand it so intuitively okay now here is the point right now why do you do all this roc analysis and you do this pe analysis you look at like candlestick patterns why do you do all this why right you are not try, trying to dissect the history that is pointless right you can't go back in time and buy the stock what you are doing is that you are building a forecast you are trying to guess the price that hey is this price let's say a year from now is it going to be like 38k or 40k or will it come down that is the bet that you are making and all these data points are just there to support that bet okay there is no hard and fast rule if it were that simple that hey just look at roc just look at pe ratio combine both the things and you get the share price everyone would be making insane amount of money in the stock market people will sell everything put all their money on page industry stock and you're done right but it is not that simple you are trying to build a forecast so you must have a basic sense of something called as moat m o a t this is the golden point that you need to understand about page industries 
So, okay. So, let me first and foremost explain what moat is and then I will tell you non-obvious things that you must understand about page industry and what I think about the stock. So, moat simply means and this is a term that has been coined by Mr. Warren Buffett and he simply means that hey, these are the competitive advantages that a company has built. Okay. Think about it rationally. So, pick any company. So, let's pick Zomato. Right. So Zomato, what it has done, it's a business, right? And it recently raised its IPO. Now, what is it doing, right? It is building a kind of an ecosystem. For example, there is like pro membership, there is like huge delivery things, they're expanding to new things, this, that. Now, if the market picks up, right? If the market of food delivery is picking up, then what will happen? New competition will enter this market, right? Swiggy will ramp up its practice. New competitors will come, new cloud kitchens will be built, all that stuff. Moat simply means to what extent has Zomato built layers after layers, so different different layers that makes it super competitive. How is it that it is better than all the companies in the world? For example, a moat for Zomato would be that if let's say Swiggy delivers an order at 50 rupees, right? And Zomato comes out with a system where it is delivering the order at 40 rupees. What will happen? Its ROCE will go up. Why? Because who because food delivery is one of the key things that is bringing a lot of value to Zomato and Swiggy. So if Zomato figures out a way to bring this delivery cost down to 40 rupees in this hypothetical scenario, it has developed what? It has developed a competitive advantage which is called as moat, right? This in simple terms is what moat is. So with that said, let's move on to section 3. Let me explain it to you that what is the moat of a company like Page Industry is. So page industries according to me has three specific modes. There can be multiple, but I'll talk about the three key things because this is a short video. I can speak about page industries for a couple of hours, but I'll talk about three specific moat points for page industries. Moat number one that page industry has is the Genomal brand and the promoters. Now who are Genomals? So you need to understand the history a little bit. So if you take a look at the promoters of page industries, you will see Sundar Genomal, Ramesh Genomal, Nari Genomal, Madhuri Genomal, Shamir Genomal, right? So these are major promoters, right? So Genomals have been operational out of Philippines. That is where they first, that is where they first started developing a relationship with Jockey. Then Genomals actually, after the liberalization happened in India in the 90s, they expanded the Jockey brand in India. They have literally built the entire structure for Jockey in India, right? Now you would say that, okay, great, sounds awesome. There are like so many promoters promoting so many different companies. What makes these people special, okay? This, they have been running this business for years now. Their entire family is operational in this particular domain. They have seen and built these operations ground up. Very common basic point, right? Nothing fancy there. Now here is the catch that the usual structure for Jockey is to give a five-year renewal contract for that franchisee. Okay, this is generally what Jockey does with of all the franchisees that they are engaging with. But with Genomals and Page Industry, they have given a 20-year contract, right, back in 2010, right. So there was a 20-year contract starting in 2010. Now, Jockey is not like a mad firm, right. They would have already understood their value add massively. This is the first time that they have given such a long-term contract to a player. They won't do it without back testing, figuring all the things out. So, all I'm simply trying to say is that the first key moat of page industry is the management and the genomal brand. It's not just their experience. It is also the trust that Jockey is showing on these promoters, right? They are betting big. They are betting everything that they have on the Indian market on genomals. So this is very, very important point for you to understand. And this is a massive moat. This is the same stuff that will happen with another of their key brand called as Speedo. I showed you that website, right? That it had Jockey and it had Speedo. These are the two prominent brands that they are engaging in. This is the same stuff that Speedo is also likely to do. Now, when as a promoter, you have been given such a long row that, hey, you have like 10 years, 20 years to build a business, go do it your way. We completely trust you. It gives another level of confidence to the player. They are not running like, you know, like a headless chicken surviving firefighting each day. It's very similar to you and I doing a job. If our boss tells us that, you know what, I love your work. You will have salary rise every single year and you will be promoted. Here are like five promotions that we can talk about. Sign the contract for 10 years. If you're given such a long row, it just instills a level of confidence, right? Now you would say that, okay, Akshat, sounds great. This is like, sounds like a match made in heaven. But why is it, right? I mean, why is it that these people are trusting Genomals so much and betting their entire business on Genomals? Now, this is one of the stories that I read on one of the books. I can't recall the name of the book exactly. I'll put it down in the comment after this video is done. 
but i'll tell you the story right so the story went something like this that hey when back in the 90s when page industries was looking for distributors so they started the jockey brand they wanted to distribute all these products to the indian audiences so whom would they need they would need like shopkeepers they would need like retailers bunch of different people so there was this major distributor based out of gujarat or mumbai somewhere and he came to that conference where page industries had booked a nice hotel room they had called like multiple retailers and they were talking about the product that how will we place it what would be our selling strategy so that retailer got really excited that you know what that i want to keep jockey products on my store so he went up to the page industry officials and they sort of chatted up and they signed him on now even without him pushing anything the moment he started putting jockey brand on his showrooms without even pushing right he did not say that you know what do xyz more stuff for me to genovals right what they ended up doing was that at that point in time they would have signed on sushmita sen as a brand ambassador so they sent sushmita sen to inaugurate this store this shows that genovals were a long term player in the indian market and they would continue to be a long term player in the indian market because of the type of support that they were offering retailers distributors whomever work with them this is just one half of the equation second half of the equation is that you need to understand that all these textiles based industry they thrive on manual labor you would have heard that countries like bangladesh are becoming the next stop for clothing manufacturing or textile manufacturing why because of inexpensive labor now what happens is that there is like horrible treatment that is meted out to these unfortunate people that if you are working in a factory your owners are going to treat you like crap right they will just be horrible right i don't need to paint that picture for you you all understand it with genomals and the way page factories were operated they followed strict protocols they used to provide lunch and they were like pioneers in this space to provide like lunch to their workers these practices have been adopted by other players also but it shows the intent of the group that hey this is the extent to which they are going and supporting their employees distributors going beyond what is expected from them this is what builds the mood right it's not some hypothetical number that you're reading on the balance sheet those are just the outputs but the moat is that how do you treat people with you how do you treat distributors how do you treat your business partners these are things that balance sheet cannot capture now as a result what happened is that their manufacturing process improved their distribution has become one of the most effective distribution systems because they have been able to organize a lot of retailers they have mostly their own operating distribution system now which is massive that is the reason why you see the roce number of a company like page industry to be 48% which is a massive massive figure in this space now imagine this now why is roce important it is important because we took a look at lux it is growing at 36% now page industry which is the competitor is growing at 48% now this just looks like a 12 point difference right nothing major okay fine right but imagine this and compound this by 10 years and you will see that there will be a huge difference between these two companies and that is the reason why you must bet your money on a winning horse that is the reason why the pe ratio of page industry is so high so i hope this presents the picture now you would say that okay akshar understand the moat that okay genomals great people great management number two moat help their employees help their manufacturers help their distributors fine but show me some numbers right i mean i i won't just believe your word for it this these are just very qualitative factors which do not get captured so show me some numbers and show me some growth plans now this is where i will share couple of financial statements with you because these are very very important and read from right to left because this is 2020 and this is 2021 right so you will see that hey the total income has come down pandemic understood right now this is where the interesting stuff is right now this is the cost of raw material consumed now this has come down considerably right from 65 to 58 and even the purchase of traded good has come down from 63 to 48 now why has this happened the reason is the reason lies in this decrease in inventory of finished good product now they had approximately these 19663 crores worth of inventory that could not get sold it, it's still sitting in their go downs despite this despite this the cost of raw material has not come down sharply right they are still expanding their capacity right now where can you see this now you can see this on the balance sheet if you go to the balance sheet and if you take a look at fixed assets now tell me how much difference has been there right from 2020 to 2021 they are still spending money on these fixed assets because the relative or good number would be to compare it to 2019 right in 2019 their fixed assets were 301 now it's 386 which is still very good 20 25% increase 
there is a lot of pent up demand page industry already has a distribution network they have inventory in place and they have the entire setup to expand that capacity as well right and they are doing it they are pouring their money there now why am i saying it if you actually take a look at this particular article that came out on business line this is by their ceo vs ganesh you can read the entire article and there are certain key points that i want to highlight here right this is a very important paragraph from here we had a record q4 last fiscal right we had a good amount of inventory and much better control of our supply chain we continue to expand despite the pandemic adding 10000 new point of sale taking our count to 78000 point of sale pan india and added 200 exclusive brand outlets despite having so much inventory at hand they are still looking for capacity expansion because they know that this pent up demand is there once the covid situation gets resolved they are going to bounce back like anything that is when even the share price is likely to become a rocket right this is one of the key paragraphs now one more important paragraph is this right so we have now jockey was predominantly a menswear brand now they are expanding into women's innerwear brand also and they have grown massively right so this is what page industry has been doing now they have signed up with speedo now this is where the magic might happen we have plenty of headroom to grow because in the men's innerwear segment our market share is only in the teens in teens and market share in women's innerwear is in single digits and junior we have just started a couple of years ago so despite being in existence for the last 20 30 year sorting out different things building that moat of good management good distribution etc their products are fairly new especially the speedo bit expanding into new segments categories so the business fundamental tells us that this company will grow massively over the next 10 20 years this is a long term winning bet they know how to grow the firm so therefore i am also an investor in this company so this brings me to the final section now you might say that hey akshat what are you doing with this particular company when are you buying it etc see it depends on your time horizon i am a long term investor for me this becomes like a monopoly stock so i will put it from that angle and i am analyzing it from that angle that this is a winning bet that i am taking i am taking it from a long term perspective so it does not matter to me that at what price i am buying it right now because i am looking at a 2x 3x growth in this stock therefore if i am buying it at 30 32 34 it would hardly matter i'll just buy it and i'll keep aggregating small small units of this stock now if you are a very short term investor just remember that the baseline of this stock is a good support of 30000 so if the stock falls to that aggregate in big quantities if you are putting a stop loss put it at 30000 this is what i would recommend you but this is not a trading stock and i am not looking to trade in this stock at all this is a long term buy and forget type of a stock for me so i am going to invest in that stock from that perspective so 30000 buying level is fabulous for this stock but i am okay buying it at 32 34 also not a problem so this is my analysis of page industries let me know what did you think and what type of stocks would you want me to make i was thinking about making on irctc so give me a go ahead and i will do the same So I hope you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and I will see you the next time